Good morning. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Friends, welcome to worship at Leroy UMC. Whether you are in person or, or joining us online, we're thankful to have you with us. And friends, as always, a couple reminders before we begin the service. Uh, number one, we have Sunday school back in our education wing downstairs for any of our uh, young disciples ages 4 through 6th grade. Uh, we also have a little uh, new improvised kind of nursery space out here in Fellowship Hall. Uh, we're streaming the service out there, so if any of our young disciples need a, a break or even space to run around, there's some toys and things out there. Uh, and in here, in all of your pews, uh, you should have uh, prayer cards if there's a joy, concern, anything that you would like us as a church family to pray for, to pray along with you. We would love to join you in prayer. Feel free, fill that out. Leave it in the offering plate uh, at the end of the service. Uh, should also have message cards if you want to follow along or take any notes during the service. Uh, and also impact cards if you'd like to support our ministries. But friends, as always, I'd invite us as we, as we begin to look for Christ among us to join ourselves in saying our church family prayer, the prayer of the church family that we always hope Christ is making us into. Friends, let us pray. Christ, make us your hands by the way we serve our neighbor with authentic compassion and make us your family by the way we love one another with unconditional grace. Friends, let us worship the Lord. Amen. Please stand or sit however you feel most comfortable worshiping our Lord. One, two, three, four, five, six. Jesus is God. 
Thank you so much for the promise that you came here to save us. And you come here daily to save us and to be with us, never leaving us in the season that we're in. God, I know that we're not promised tomorrow or even the rest of today. But God, I just thank you so much that you've given us a hope of eternity. God, we thank you so much for everything you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This next song is uh, brand new. It's called Seasons. And I know that sometimes the season that we're in is rough and just feels like we want to get through it. And God never leaves us there in that season. It seems like an eternity when we're there and then we get through it. And it seems like it didn't last as long as it did. And this song is talking, I know a lot of people in here are, are farmers, so there's a lot of uh, harvest talk. So I just pray that this song, if, if you don't know it, that you just let it touch your heart.
melt the ice of this wild soul till the barren is beautiful and I know though the winter is long even richer the harvest is I can see the promise, I can see the future, you're the God of seasons, and I'm just in the winter, if all I know of harvest is that it's worth my patience, and if you're not done working, God, I'm not done waiting, you can see my promise, even in the winter, you're the God of greatness, even in a manger, for all I know of seasons, that you take your time could have saved us in a second instead you sent a child though the winter is long even richer the harvest Finally see my tree, so I believe there's a season to go. Like a seed you were sown for the sake of us all from Bethlehem so grew Calvary sickle. I remember when I was young and your voice shouting loud my name. Since that moment, I haven't heard it quite that way. Well, now that I'm older, could you say it again? I remember when I was afraid Oh, the hand I felt lead the way. For the first time in my life, I felt safe. Oh, God, now that I'm older, would you leave me again? When the storm's out on the remember when I was blind and then your love opened up my eyes and all the lights that flooded my life well now that I'm older could you show me again would you show me
space between the heavens and my Friends, you may be seated. Friends, as we begin a new year, we are also adding a new component, a new element to our Sunday morning worship services. We hope each Sunday in this new year to have a time in our service when we can pray together with the words of Scripture, with a Scripture passage, to pray with God's Word together. Uh, and the hope of this prayer time is that we might leave each of you with a, a single line of scripture uh, that maybe in the a week ahead might, uh, might stick in your head and come to you at just the right moment, sort of a mantra for your week ahead. Uh, and in fact, that is how we will pray the scripture together. Uh, I will lead us through the bulk of it, but I would invite us all to respond together in saying the one line from the passage that we hope will stay with you throughout the week ahead. So friends, I would invite us at this time to join together in praying with the words of a parable from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. Friends, let us pray. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Now 
Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Then the king will reply, Brothers and sisters, let us join ourselves together in prayer as we take all things to Christ. Christ Jesus, you have singled us out from the crowd. You have called us by name. And Lord, when you call us, you don't just call us to be students or followers or supporters. You call us to be your hands, your servants. Lord, you don't intend for us to simply learn your words or sit at your feet, but you have plans for us to go out and work your will, to take your comfort to the lonely, to show your grace to the hopeless, to bring your health to the sick, to give your peace to the broken. Lord, you don't just call us to be followers, you call us to be disciples, to take up your ministry. So Christ Jesus, give us new strength and new determination this morning and in this new year. Show us the people in our lives who need us and let us reach out to be your hands in their lives. Let us show you to others with every kind word and small act and let us find you with every prayer that we lift up, with every burden that we set down. Christ Jesus, you call us and you see us completely. You see all it is that we carry in our hearts and in our minds. So Lord, let us bring all things to you in this still moment. Christ, you have not called us to simply follow, but you have called us to take up your work and your ministry. So make us your hands and your servants working your will this and all the days to come. We ask this in your name as we pray with the words you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're keeping you on your toes with a new response. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. And hopefully that is the Lord's way of saying he likes the new response. <laughs> but friends, uh, this morning we're continuing with our uh, worship series for this month, for January. Uh, We are calling it The Great Reset, and as we shared last Sunday, the whole idea for this series is that COVID changed a lot. It changed a lot about our jobs, about simple things, about the way we buy groceries and go to restaurants, all kinds of things. Uh, And as we move into a kind of a post-COVID world, 
And yes, I appreciate the irony that we are talking about the post-COVID world when I just had COVID uh, this last week. Uh, I think the Lord is having a little bit of fun with me. But as we move into a post-COVID world, many of us uh, are having to seriously consider or rethink what really matters to us, what's worth bringing back into our schedules, into our routines. Uh, and so this month we are looking at four figures, four characters from the Bible who went through a great reset of some kind, and we're talking about how they responded to it, or what faith looked like in that reset. Last Sunday we looked at St. Peter, and this morning we are looking at two, uh, I guess, two underappreciated leaders of the early church, uh, Priscilla and Aquila. And our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 18, verses 1 through 4, and then we'll skip over to the end of the chapter, verses 24 to 28. Friends, listen now for the word of the Lord. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila from Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together. By trade, they were tent makers. Every Sabbath, he would argue in the synagogue and would try to convince Jews and Greeks. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew named Apollos from Alexandria, he was an eloquent man, well-versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. And when he wished to cross over to Achaia, the brothers and sisters encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. On his arrival, he greatly helped those who through grace had become believers. He powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Messiah is Jesus. Friends, in Jesus Christ, the word became flesh and dwelled among us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy God, we come here seeking words of truth and words of new life, and so only your words will do. So Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It would be hard to imagine a greater reset than moving from independent living to a nursing facility. It's a very big step to take in life, one that changes all kinds of things about a person's life and a step that can be very challenging to face. I remember once when I was really little, I once met a man who had gone through that great reset and who had responded to it in the most incredible way. I won't use his real name, we'll just call him Fred. Fred was maybe 78, 80 years old. He was still very active and very sharp, but he had reached the point that he couldn't care for himself alone anymore, and so his family had helped move him to a nursing facility. And Fred had had to give up his home as part of that move give up the keys to his car, say goodbye to his neighbors, let go of familiar routines, and it had in many ways to start over in a new place with new faces. It's a transition that might have left him incredibly discouraged, overwhelmed, sad, or angry, and while Fred probably did, feel all of those things, at least at first. It's only, it's only natural to feel sad or frustrated when life changes and you have no say about it. But the thing is, Fred didn't stay that way. Rather than getting caught up in his sadness, Fred decided 
that there was still more he could do. So Fred started doing something new. Every day, Fred would wake up early in the morning, put on a suit and a tie, comb his hair, look his best, and then head out into the nursing facility to visit all the different residents. Fred would show up. He would knock on your door. He'd walk in with a big smile and ask how you were doing, how your day was going, and then just chit-chat for a little while about anything and everything, the weather, sports, whatever it might be. He visited the active and the bed confined, the healthy and the sick, the cheerful and the grieving as he made his weekly rounds, getting to know almost everyone. It wasn't the most exciting thing to do or the most dramatic way to help folks out, but with each door that he knocked on and with each little conversation that he had, Fred not only made everyone's day just a little bit brighter, but in his own simple way, Fred reminded each person he visited that someone cared and that they mattered to someone. Fred was a man who went through a seismic, life-changing reset, but who realized that no matter how his life was reset, he would always find ways to be a minister to others, because being the hands of Jesus Christ would always matter to him. Choosing to be a minister to others is not always an easy thing to do, especially not after your life has been reset. It certainly hasn't been easy for many people today after the reset that COVID forced all of us to go through. We talked about it before, how for an entire year our normal lives came to a grinding halt and about how when all the COVID restrictions were finally eased or relaxed, we were all forced to think very seriously about what matters to us, what habits, what routines, what things are worth picking back up again. And Unfortunately for many people, volunteering wasn't always something to be picked back up. I saw a study done by Gallup back at the end of 2021 that found that while about 64% of Americans reported volunteering on a regular basis before COVID in 2017, 58% of Americans were willing to volunteer during COVID in 2020, and 56% of Americans volunteered post-COVID at the start of 2022. It's actually a decline that Gallup found goes even further back than that to 2013 and beyond. And I'll admit, that's not necessarily surprising. Volunteering isn't easy. It takes a lot of time. It takes uh, chances and new risks. It can also be a real challenge to start serving and ministering to others once you've gotten out of that routine or that habit. But that's exactly what two unsung leaders of the early church had to do when they found their lives suddenly reset in the most dramatic way in that passage we just heard, Acts 18. Priscilla and Aquila were a husband and wife who ran a really small family business. They were tent makers, we're told, just like Paul. They worked very hard, they had success, and they made a wonderful home for themselves in the city of Rome, where I imagine they had lived for a long time. It's likely that their family had been Romans for many generations. Until one day, their lives were turned upside down and reset when, as Acts tells us, Emperor Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave 
Rome. Because of something that was out of their control, Priscilla and Aquila suddenly had to sell their home, had to give away or sell all the furniture and possessions that they'd collected over the years, had to say goodbye to the neighbors that they'd made memories with, had to leave the city that they had called home for decades and start all over again in a new city called Corinth. And while I can't begin to imagine how angry, how sad, how heartbroken Priscilla and Aquila must have been to have their lives reset like that, as the book of Acts tells us, when they got to Corinth, the two decided that there was still more that they could do. First, they found a new synagogue, a new church family where they could find the peace of God, no matter how chaotic the week may have been. Then they started up their business again. They found a little storefront somewhere in Corinth and started making new connections. They started meeting new friends and new faces, including one stranger named Paul. And while they might have been forgiven at that point in their lives for thinking about themselves first, for focusing solely on getting their business going again and getting their lives back together, Priscilla and Aquila at that moment make the extraordinary decision to be ministers to Paul. They don't do the most exciting thing in the world or make the most dramatic impact. All they do is show Paul the simple kindness of a small guest room where he could stay for a little while. But with every ordinary meal that they shared with him, with every how are you doing that they asked in the morning, with every place they gave him to stay at night, Priscilla and Aquila not only made Paul's time in Corinth just a little bit brighter, but they reminded him that he mattered to the body of Christ. But that wasn't even the end of the story. Sometime later, another stranger, an itinerant preacher named Apollos, came to town. Priscilla and Aquila hear the new minister and decide to be ministers to him. They invite him to stay with them, and once again, with every simple meal, every friendly gesture, and every ordinary act of kindness, Priscilla and Aquila, as verse 26 puts it, explained the way of God to him more accurately and showed Apollos what it means to be the hands of Jesus Christ. And that's just it. That's what Priscilla and Aquila were really doing in that passage and in all the little places where they appear in the story of the early church. For all the ways their lives had been turned upside down in their great reset, for all the ways their eviction had forced them to reconsider what really mattered to them, what was worth restarting in their new city and in their new lives, Priscilla and Aquila decided that they would always find ways to minister to others because being the hands of Jesus Christ would always matter to them. For Priscilla and Aquila, no matter how the world around them may have changed, no matter how their own lives might have changed, their ministry would always matter and they would never stop ministering by their simple ordinary acts of kindness no matter what they had they would always make meals for others no matter what their home or where it was others would always be welcome inside it and no matter how their lives changed they would always find ways to care for others because it's simple acts of kindness that raise up the next Saint Paul or Saint Apollos. And it's the simple ways we serve our neighbor with compassion that make us 
the hands of Christ Jesus. That's what mattered to Priscilla and to Aquila, and the good news is that's what matters to us. That's the vision of our church family that we pray together every Sunday morning. You all know it. Hopefully at this point, you might even have it memorized. And what's the very first part of our church vision, our church family prayer? Christ, make us your hands by the way we serve our neighbor with authentic compassion. We pray every Sunday morning as a church family that God would give us the grace, give us the wisdom, give us the fire to reach out and serve others because no matter how our world may change or our lives may shift and be reset, being Christ's hands will always matter to us. It's something that's always been of value, something that's always gone to the core of this church family. I love, over the past few years, I love the moments whenever I've heard about someone who was sick or someone who was going through a hard time and then heard that one of you had already reached out had already dropped off a meal, had already visited, had already seen them without ever being asked. It's one of the most indescribable joys, and it's also one of the most unique things about Christianity as a faith, about Christianity as a religion, that we follow a Savior who doesn't just invite us to follow, who doesn't just invite us to learn. It's not just about the teachings, but we follow a Savior who invites us to share in his ministry. As Elie Wiesel put it, we serve a God in whom our lives no longer belong to us alone, but they belong to all who need us. That is the kind of joyful new life that Christ calls us to. A life that is ours because it is also theirs. A life that is made whole because it is shared. And a life that matters because being Christ's hands matters to us. And with every kind word, every simple visit, every ordinary meal dropped off, every prescription picked up, every lesson taught, every feed my sheep bag packed, with every simple act of grace, so many people in this church family have already found so many ways to be a minister, to be Christ's hands as we serve our neighbor. The only question is, how will we keep going? What will your ministry be in this new year? It doesn't have to be anything extraordinary or overly dramatic. Priscilla and Aquila didn't convert Paul or baptize Apollos. Their ministry was much simpler. But sometimes it is the simplest acts of kindness that have the greatest impact and the most lasting effect. What St. Paul or Apollos of tomorrow will you help build up? How will you be Christ's hands to them? Will you help out with our youth group or our Boy Scout troop and teach some young man or young woman some of the wisdom that you've picked up over the years? Will you jump in at the food pantry, at home sweet home, or face second chance and do something that means the world to someone who needs you How will you be a minister to someone who needs you to not only brighten their day, but to remind them that they will always matter to Christ Jesus? We may not have been forced to relocate by a Roman emperor, and we may not be moving from independent to assisted living, but we have all gone through a great reset. COVID put all of our lives on hold, and in the aftermath, 
we are still having to ask ourselves very seriously what really matters to us. But the good news that Priscilla and Aquila and Fred found and the good news that we get to keep on living out in a new year is that no matter how our lives may be reset, we are disciples of Jesus Christ. And we are the ones who will always find ways to be ministers because being the hands of Jesus Christ will always matter to us. And thanks be to God for it. Amen. Friends, please join with me in prayer. Christ, make us your hands by the way we serve our neighbor with authentic compassion. Christ, give us a friendly face to show to someone who needs a visit to remind them that someone cares. Give us the will to make a dinner for a neighbor who needs a meal to remind them they belong. Give us a guest room to open up to a visitor who needs to see that the body of Christ is alive and well. Christ, make us your hands in this new year and let us make our mark. Let us build our little corner of your kingdom come with each life-giving act of kindness that you call us to show. In your name we pray. Amen. It was a special celebration at the club recently as the stamp ministry reached an amazing milestone. Well, this is a, just an amazing opportunity to invite some of our long-standing stamp room volunteers to a luncheon that has been provided by the church and also Shell Point in recognition of the fact that the stamp ministry, which started back in 1972, as of July of 2018, has generated $1 million by the, the sale of stamps. Wow! <laughs> One million dollars from something that small. All of these monies have left Shell Point and have gone to support a mission project in relation to uh, Spanish-speaking people. Used stamps are donated to Shell Point where they are given a second life as they are turned into money. Funds obtained from the resale of these stamps is then used in the creation of Sunday school print materials. And I think the cause is great. It generates Christian literature. And I think that's a great thing. I can't think of a better cause, and that uh, the money generated from it is from something that most people throw away. Volunteers who cut and sort the stamps find it fun and educational as well. It's a great deal going on in each country, and, and the stamps that we trim are from countries all around the world. And it's, it's a learning experience. It's amazing. The stamps that you find that you've never seen before. And I think it can be an educational uh, thing as well. Well, I was interested in, a, in it. I had served so many years up north. And so I wanted to follow through. I felt it was a great ministry uh, in what they did with the money that, as they sold the stamps. My name is David Constance. I was the founder of Alliance Publications in Argentina when we lived there as missionaries, and uh, that ministry has continued and has expanded over the years so that the publishing ministry is now distributing books in uh, all over Latin America. And with me are standing two important people in what is called the publishing ministry in Argentina. It's called in English Alliance Publications in Spanish Publicaciones Alianza, this is Daniel Vanderwood, the president of the Argentine Alliance Church, Franco Quiroga, the president of the publishing house Publicaciones Alianza. Y sepa cada voluntario que está en este ministerio. And I want to say to each volunteer that's in this ministry, que el trabajo que están haciendo bendice a cientos de niños. That the work that they're doing is, is blessing hundreds of thousands of children. 
Franco. Es un placer para mí estar aquí en este lugar. It's a pleasure for me to be here in this place. Agradecido a Dios y a todos ustedes por ayudarnos. And to say thank you again to God, first of all, and to all of you for what you are doing. Y están contentos de compartir con ustedes estos 50 años. And to join with you in celebrating these 50 years of ministry of the Stamp Ministry. Thank you. The Stamp Ministry at Shell Point has over 70 volunteers who trim, sort, and process the stamps in four different locations. The Stamp Room in the Island Tunnel, the Arbor, King's Crown, and the Springs Assisted Living Facilities. Once a week, we, uh, we celebrate uh, the Stamp Ministry on the first floor of uh, the Springs. We all show up, we all know what we're to do, we learn from each other, learn a great deal about the countries that the stamps are coming from. We've seen the, the stamps go out, we've seen the money come in, and to get to this milestone of one million is it's just hard to comprehend, but the Lord has been in it. Well, friends, the vision of our church family is to be Christ's hands of service and Christ's family of grace. Uh, and we're always looking for new ways to do that, new ministries to support. Uh, so we are thankful to launch a new ministry. Uh, it's a stamp ministry. It's uh, started down south, but uh, a few of our different church members mentioned it, wanted to try launching it. And so we would invite you, go ahead, start uh, saving envelopes after you get your mail, start saving stamps. Uh, you can bring them. There's a drop-off box here in the main entryway, and all of that will go to have an impact to help uh, help share good news uh, with with young uh, kids, with the next generation all over the world. Uh, but friends, we are also always up to all kinds of ministries, uh, peace meals, uh, youth groups, all kinds of things are always happening. If you'd like to support our different ministries and the ministries we host, uh, we are thankful for any support. Uh, we'll have offering plates heading around in a second, or you can always support ministries electronically. But friends, I would invite us to go ahead and continue to worship through the gifts that we bring and through our final hymn. Please stand if you're able.
Well, friends, just a couple of reminders or a couple announcements as we end the service. Number one, do feel free, bring in uh, envelopes. Any extra stamps you have or leftover envelopes, uh, that will support our new ministry. Uh, also, please keep bringing in full-size shampoo bottles. Uh, if you're out at the grocery store and you think of it, grab an extra shampoo bottle. We will keep taking those to Home Sweet Home Ministries. Uh, they use those, uh, they give them out to all the new residents who come to stay with them, and that is an item that our church family will provide for them uh, throughout the new year ahead. Uh, and also, uh, Financial Peace University, that is coming up the end of this month. If you are interested, there should still be a sign-up sheet out in Fellowship Hall. Uh, feel free to put your name down. We'd love to share a little bit more about it. But friends, with all that shared, I'd invite you to receive the final blessing. Now go forth into the world to not just follow Christ, but to take up the ministry of Christ Jesus. Go forth to be the hands of Jesus Christ in the lives of others with every miraculously simple act of grace that you show. And may the blessing of Almighty God be with each and every one of you now and evermore. Amen. Friends, the service is ended. Go in peace.